going to consider uh, a transfer price under those three scenarios we just talked about. For this hypothetical example at the top, let's have a look at the seller, the division, uh, the division who's the seller, has capacity to produce 10,000 units. Their variable cost per unit is $8. Their total fixed costs are $70,000. And they can sell in the outside market. They're currently selling in the outside market. Their selling price per unit is $20. The buyer, on the other hand, is already buying in the marketplace at $18 per unit and is buying 2,000 units. So there is a condition where the buyer says to the seller, listen, I'm buying what you're selling for 18 bucks. And the seller says, well, I'm selling it for 20. But there are three conditions here. What if there's extra capacity? What if there's no capacity? And what if there is some capacity? Can there still be a deal? Well, number one, the seller is selling 7,000 units right now, has capacity to produce 10,000 units. So can still sell another three, but doesn't have a customer for it. Here's a customer for 2000 right away. Well, we know that the seller, the transfer price must be greater than their variable cost. So what is the variable cost we have is $8 plus our loss contribution margin on sales we give up. To fill the order of 2000, how many units do we have to give up? None. We can continue to sell these 7,000 units to the outside market. We don't give any of those up. So we have zero lost contribution margin divided by 2,000 units. Zero divided by anything is zero equals $8. So here, the transfer price must be greater than or equal to $8. We'll put the greater than or equal to sign here so that we understand what's going on. And this is greater than or equal to as well. From the seller, from the buyer's perspective, the transfer price must be less than or equal to the market price they're already paying. So it must be less than or equal to $18. So what we have here is we have a condition where our transfer price must be less than or equal to 18, but greater than or equal to eight. So a deal can be made. Follow along here. If the transfer price is set at $9, the seller does very well because it's only costing eight. The seller will make $1 per unit times 2,000 units. The seller will make another $2,000. Their fixed costs are still $70,000. So that $2,000 just goes right to the bottom line if the transfer price were nine. From the buyer's perspective, if the transfer price were nine, instead of paying $36,000 as they are now, they would only be paying $18,000. So it's really in the buyer's best interest to do that. It is significantly in the buyer's best interest. Now, if nine is in the seller's best interest and nine is in the buyer's best interest, that means that transfer is in the organization's best interest overall. Well, it doesn't have to stop at nine. The seller could simply say, well, listen, even if I sell it for 17, the buyer still saves $2,000. We'll still have a higher operating income by $2,000. And I will get the difference between 17 and eight, which is $9 times the 2,000 units. The seller will realize an extra 18,000. Typically when there's a range like this, and it's in both the seller's and the buyer's best interest. They'll find a point in the middle and they'll say, what do you think? And the point in the middle here is 13. Chances are the transfer price would be set at 13. So when there's idle capacity, negotiating is easy because it's a win-win for everybody. Let's move on to no capacity. The seller is already selling 10,000 units uh, to the outside market. So as far as the seller is concerned, it's saying, well, my transfer price must be greater than or equal to my variable cost, which is $8 plus my lost contribution margin on the 2000 units. If I had to sell those 2000 units to the buyer inside the organization, I would have to redirect them away from customers in the outside market. I'm selling them for $20. It costs me eight. I would lose $12 per unit times 2,000 units. And I would have to recover that loss contribution margin on the units I sell to the other division, so I'd have to spread that cost over 2,000 units. So at full capacity, we can see that they cancel out. It's eight plus 20 minus eight 
which is 20 bucks, right? Over here, the transfer price must be less than or equal to the market price. The buyer is not going to pay more than market. So it must be less than or equal to $18. Well, there's our problem. Look at what we have. The transfer price must be greater than or equal to 20, but less than or equal to 18. That condition cannot be satisfied, so we have no transfer price. There's no transfer price. And does that make sense for the organization? Division A and Division B say, well, we can't get together on this. Does that make sense? Well, yes, it does, because look, Division A is selling them for $20 in the marketplace already and is at full capacity. To sell it internally for less than $20, Division A would have to give up something. So let's say it did transfer it at $18. Division B here is no better off. Division B is no better off. 18 to the outside or 18 to its own, own people, it's no better off. But Division A is now selling 18,000, uh, um, sorry, 8,000 units at 20 bucks and 2,000 units at 18 bucks. So it's giving up 2,000 units uh, on its, uh, on its um, capacity at $2 on the selling price. So it's going to have $4,000 less. That's $4,000 less of cash coming into the organization as well. So when there is no transfer price, it is also within the organization's best interest not to do the transfer. So when we see that there is a range and it's in everybody's, when it's in both divisions' best interest, it's also in the organization's best interest. When we see that there is no range and it's not in anybody's best interest, it's also not in the organization's best interest. Let's go on to scenario three. The seller is selling 9,000 units. The buyer needs two. The seller says, I can easily supply one. I can supply one. I have unused capacity, but I can't fill the two. The buyer says, look, I, I want two, or I'll just go to the outside. I don't want to deal with two suppliers. So what's the transfer price that can be set? Well, from the seller's uh, perspective, it's the same thing. I want my variable cost, period, plus. Fine, I can supply the 1,000 without sacrificing anything, but to supply 2,000, I have to redirect 1,000 units that I'm already selling on the market for 20 bucks and sell them to you. So I am going to lose my $20 minus my $8 variable cost. That's my contribution margin per unit. And I'm going to lose that on 1,000 units. But I have 2,000 units of which to spread that cost over. So 20 mi the, the, this uh, uh, cancels out. This turns to 2. 20 minus 8 is 12. Divided by 2 is 6. We have 8 plus 6. So it must be greater than or equal to $14. From the buyer's perspective, as long as the price is less than or equal to $18, we got a deal. So we have a situation where the transfer price must be less than or equal to $18, but greater than or equal to $14. Again, whenever you have a range, it's in the company, it's in Division A's best interest when it's over 14. It's in Division B's best interest when it's under 18. And if it's in both Division A and Division B's best interest, it's also in the company's best interest. Since you have 14 to 18, find a point halfway through, $16. That will be your transfer price when there is some idle capacity. Now, here is the problem. This all sounds nice and neat, doesn't it? But scenario two represents the most likely situation here, that there is no transfer price. Here's why. Let's start with scenario three at 9,000 units. Once, once they commit to selling these 2,000 units, once they commit to this transfer price, the seller is at full capacity, which means they have no chance of selling in the outside market at this point because they're already at full capacity. If we go over to the uh, seventh, when they're at 7,000 units of capacity, if they sell the 2,000 units to the other division, they're at 9,000, they can really only sell another 1,000 in the market before they hit full capacity. So if Division A is motivated to increase its sales to the outside market, it'll eventually squeeze out this internal buyer because it's getting 20 in the marketplace. So Division A might say, look, 
Maybe I can supply you 2,000 units now, but I'm certainly not going to enter into a five-year commitment to supply 2,000 units to you because I am hoping that over the next six, to, six months to nine months that I can increase my sales from 7,000 up to capacity. That would, be, that would be the hope of Division A's manager. Unless the company is willing to invest in greater capacity, anything, any unused capacity selling to an internal buyer is probably going to be done on very short-term contracts, one year to two years at a time, because I'm, if I'm the seller, I'm not going to commit myself to a five-year commitment, run up against capacity, and then turn away customers outside who want to buy from me at 20 because I'm left selling to you inside at 16. So I'm very unwilling to enter into any long-term commitment. So for some companies and for some processes where you need a particular part uh, that goes into a unit, and let's say that part has to be fit into that unit, or some other parts have to be modified to the part that you're getting, so that means you're looking for long-term supply. This is, this is airline, if you're supplying to any of the airline uh, manufacturers, Boeing or anything like that, you, you're committing to five to ten year uh, uh, supply contracts because they can't keep switching suppliers. Simply because of the precision of which you make a part must be met by the precision of the other parts. So, sometimes there's a hesitancy, even if there is capacity, to commit that capacity to an internal buyer when the market price that the division can sell it for outside is higher than the price that the buyer internally would ever be willing to pay anyway. So, to sum up, chances are even if there is capacity, the market price will probably be the most likely one chosen because D Division A does have an external market price and a price in that external market. There we go. A lot more information than you wanted, I think, but it's better to have more than less.